Welcome to a tour of all my house plants in my house. So I'm going to show you all the plants I have in my kitchen and dining room here, in my living room and my bedroom. It's just started chucking it down outside, so it's quite a gloomy day. But I've not done a plant tour in a few months, so quite a lot has changed since I did the last one. So it's going to be really interesting to see the difference between the two. So when you come through the front door of the house, these are the first two plants that greet you. So we have a small parlor palm, which does have, have some crispy brown leaves on the ends, which I think is sun damage. That happens with this plant uh, very readily when sunlight touches the leaves, direct sun. Um, I've had this a fair few uh, years, but it's not really grown that big. It's always stayed this size. Doesn't seem particularly root bound or anything, but just happily lives there. Looks quite nice, even with the crispy brown leaves. And then next to it is a rather nice umbrella plant or umbrella tree, Schefflera. So it's a variegated one, lovely variegation in the leaves. I've had this a couple of years now, maybe two or three years. It's a really nice plant, quite big. It looks quite nice here. That's the first plant you see. And then you get some good light. So this is a west facing door. So it gets some good light coming through at the end of the afternoon as the sun comes round. It seems to like that all the leaves are kind of facing this way. So I do have to rotate it every once in a while. Or I could just leave it like that just to face all the leaves to face in that direction. And there's new leaves coming out of the top, so it's a happy plant. So just in my kitchen now, just above my sink area, I always have two or three plants located on this windowsill, just above my tap. And this one is really handsome. This is a new plant to us. It was given to us by a family friend. This is a coleus and it's a really, really fast grower, really nice foliage. The more sun you give this plant, the uh, deeper the red. So it's in a nice bright spot here in front of this east facing window. So it gets lots of morning sun. It does shed some leaves quite often, but it seems happy enough. New leaves are coming through. This is my philodendron birkin. So this used to be one of my favorite plants in my collection but I do seem to have a lot of trouble with it, which is mainly this kind of thing right here. The new leaves kind of go brown and mushy. And I think it's from overwatering, but it does seem to happen quite a lot, despite the fact that I've adjusted my watering and not watering it too much. So it's a very fussy plant. There's another one there, look. The new white leaves, they come out and they go brown and mushy. Not sure why. Um, so when it's in good health, this plant is absolutely stunning with the pinstripe variegation, but getting it in rude health is quite a challenge I find. And then next to those two, got some algae on that pot all over my hands now. Next to that is a syngonium, green syngonium. There's a coleus leaf on it, which as you can see is struggling a little bit. So I've had this plant a few years now. Um, I've root pruned it. I've done quite a lot to this plant as a kind of experimentation plant for the channel. So whenever I do something, I tend to always do it to this plant first. So it does get beaten up quite a bit. And as you can see, it's got some yellowing leaves, which to be honest, syngoniums always have yellow leaves. So I just cut them out. It's got new ones coming out of the front. So I think it's just survival of the fittest. As new growth comes through, it sheds some of the older ones. So I'm not too bothered about that but it does need tidying up by pruning it back. I've got a couple of ferns, which look radically different. This is a nice healthy one, because I've always had it in this spot next to this door, nice bright door there with east facing light coming through. So it gets early morning sun, which is just about right for a fern. Any more than that, afternoon sun, then the fronds would crisp up. But this is looking absolutely fantastic. I've had this maybe six, seven months, something like that. I did buy it this year. It's very deep green, looks nice in that pot. But its brother here, this fern, I was doing it for a video that I'm working on on the channel. Um, well, I did an experimentation on it and it's uh, gone very crispy brown, so not looking very happy at all. So I'm trying to bring that back to life by putting it in this spot, in this nice bright spot there next to its friend. So hopefully it will bounce back. And then up here, we have a Hoya carnosa, I believe it's called, which is a very nice plant, a trailing type plant, but it's 
a very slow grower, which is a bit odd. I don't think it needs a repot. Let's have a little look at the roots at the bottom, if there's anything poking out. No, there isn't. So I don't think it's root bound or anything like that. It's just a very slow grower for some reason. I've had this maybe two years now. And it stayed more or less the same size, quite thick and bushy. It does sometimes get the odd dead leaf coming through, but that's par for the course with plants. So it lives up here on this little shelf there. So I'm wondering whether it's not getting enough light at top because it's quite near the ceiling. So that might be an issue, but it looks quite nice there in that little spot trailing down. So I was hoping it would trail all the way down as it got older and longer. Doesn't seem to have happened yet, but still looks very nice. Just here is my lipstick plant, which I can't quite remember the scientific name for it, but it's the lipstick plant. It's actually quite near to this column radiator, which is a bit risky. Doesn't seem to mind it too much. Doesn't get blasted, I don't think. So it's hanging on this bracket unit that I've somehow managed to drill onto this wall. But um, yeah, look at the flowers. This is a plant that absolutely loves to flower all summer long. This has been flowering since probably May, maybe even April. Um, slightly phallic looking flowers, which I've mentioned on the channel before. It looks quite interesting when they start to poke out. But the plant, the thing that this plant absolutely wants most of all is tons and tons of light, which it's got here. It's right in front of this big east facing window. So it gets lots and lots of early morning sun, even direct sun on the, on the leaves. And it really doesn't mind. It just pushes out loads and loads of lovely red flowers. So at the top of this shelving unit, I get some comments on my videos asking about where I got this shelving unit from, but it was made for me by a joiner that we know locally in Sheffield. Um, so just on top of there, I've got a nice selection of plants. This one is one of my favorites, if I can get it out. This is the, what's this called? This is the Marble Queen Puffos, which is a really beautiful plant. Lovely, lovely variegation in the leaves. So they're kind of white green leaves, but they also go a little bit beige at the top as well. So I've got it climbing up this trellis trellis. By the way, I've got a link to trellis trellis in the description of the video. You get a 10% discount, I think, if you follow my affiliate link. Looking absolutely gorgeous climbing up there. So that's in the corner. And put that back delicately. So it likes to face the light. So that's why I've got it right in the corner here. So that it faces the light and it doesn't want to uh, climb around the back is what it was doing before. Uh, next to it is Marble Queen Pothos. So this was quite a large plant before, but I was, wasn't happy with how it was growing on this plank of wood. So I've cut it right, right back. All the stems are cut right back. So I'm waiting for new growth to appear to attach itself onto that plank. And then it will get bigger leaves as it grows higher up the plank. This is an Aglionema. So this is, this featured in my soy video where I gave my Aglionema soy, absolutely decimated that plant. And this was its brother that just got water. It's obviously much happier. We're not having any soy in the leaves. It's got a yellow leaf there, but that looks like it's the oldest leaf, just losing, losing some vigor. So that'll drop off naturally. New growth coming out of the top. So it's a happy plant. Just noticed a, uh, a little stake there that lived there before. It's obviously fallen down. Put that back. So here, one of my favorite plants, the Ficus elastica tineki. Um, so I've got a bit of a mixed bag with this. One or two of them, not looking so great. Whoops. But this one is looking absolutely gorgeous. This is a cutting that I took from the mother plant, which is down here, which I'll show you in a bit. And it's grown absolutely beautifully. None of the leaves are showing any discoloration, no browning whatsoever. And it's not leaning over. So I cut it back early in its life, right there. And it's branched out into two branches, which is what I wanted. It's looking very tree-like, very happy. I love the variegation on the Tineki. And if you can get it right, give it the things it wants, then uh, it will reward you with lovely foliage. And I think that plant loves lots of light, even some morning, early morning sun, which is what it gets here. This is my 
this, uh, if I can get it out, this is stuck to my coleus, this little fungus gnat catcher, the yellow thing. So this is my philodendron melanocrysis, as I like to joke on the channel, or melanocrysum. So this was, I got this plant last August, 22, no, not August, autumn, 22, maybe uh, September, maybe even October, 2022. It's given me nothing but problems since. Some of the leaves struggling to unfurl, looking a bit ropey it was. So I cut it right back. It was a plant that was up here, very tall, lots and lots of leaves. And I'll show you the cuttings that are rooting in a little bit. I cut it right back. And it's got three new growth points there, just opening up as we speak. So hopefully these new growth points will attach itself onto this plank. It'll become accustomed to my environment because they're new and hopefully it won't give me so much bother. That's the plan anyway. So I like to have that facing the light like that, so it doesn't get all twisty and turny. And next to that is another coleus, which is very handsome. Again, you losing leaves as they always do, but nice bright spot. So it's got a nice um, deep red purpley foliage. Next to the coleus, we have one of my favorite plants, the J plant, one of more my one of my more established J plant, jade plants, uh, Crashula ovata, if you want the scientific name. So I've recently pruned this back as part of my care video that I've done on the channel recently. So I'm just waiting for new growth to spout from those points. But very happy plant, nice thick trunk, which is what you want. So the more you prune it back, the thicker the trunk becomes. So that's a very happy plant. It wants as much light as you've got, well it does in my environment anyway. Um, might not like it if you're in somewhere like Arizona or the desert or something like that. So just watch it. But for my climate, it likes to have as much sun as possible. I've got, so those cuttings that I took from the plant in that video, I'm uh, rooting one of them in this pot so that will develop into a nice plant. I think this is a Hoya. I can't remember the name of it. Heart leaf shaped Hoya. Uh, so that doesn't do anything really. It doesn't grow at all. I'm not really sure what the uh, deal is with that. That was given to me as a present by Mrs. Sheffield. I think that was a few months ago, maybe springtime. So this here is a type of anthurium. Oh, I'm getting stabbed by the, uh, the flower spike. So it's a really interesting plant, lovely foliage on the leaves. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous variegation. Um, so it's pushed out. This was in quite a sorry state at the end of winter going into spring this year, all the leaves were crispy brown. So all of these leaves are new new ones that's put out this year. So I pruned back all the damaged one and it sent out lots of new ones. It's even got some flower spikes, which uh, don't really amount to much, but it is what it is. Nice plant. So I like to have that facing away from the room, which is a bit of a shame because you don't see the foliage, but that means that all the leaves face towards the light, which makes it happy, so it doesn't twist and go all deformed in its shape. And then here is a cutting of a devil's ivy. Um, really nice plant. So that is starting, oh, yes. That is starting to attach to the, um, the plank of wood. So that's good. So that'll attach on, grow nice and tall. And in theory, it should develop larger and larger leaves as it does so. So that's good to see. My plan has worked with that plant. Put it back carefully. In the corner here, which is quite tricky to see. Let's see if you can see that, not really. It's the Hoya Lisa, which has taken over this corner of the room and it's grown all the way up onto this devil's ivy that I've got that I'll show you in a little bit. I'll show you a better angle in a little bit. But that's a uh, Hoya Lisa, very happy plant, likes as much light as you can give it. In the corner of this little space here, we have my rubber plant, my green ficus elastica, which has grown lots of new stems since I cut it back from one of my videos, but none of them are facing in the correct direction, really. But all the leaves are getting nice and big. So it's a happy plant. There's a new leaf unfurling at the top. So it's a very nice plant. 
Got some uh, area roots at the bottom. And then here is the mother plant or the Ficus elastica tineki that I showed you earlier that I made a cutting with. And this is one that doesn't seem to be in great health because it's got some brown leaves. So I'm not sure why these have got brown leaves. Probably need to investigate further. But a fair few of them have done that, which is a shame. Still got new growth coming out of the top, which is what you want. And this is a plant that I cut back the stem there, hoping that it would branch out into two, like it did with the other one. But it only developed one long one there and one tiny one at the bottom there, which is a bit of a shame. So it's a bit of a hit or miss with this plant, unfortunately. So that's one that probably needs a bit of investigation. I've got, this is a cutting of my Monstera Deliciosa. So I've got another plant in my bedroom that I'll show you later. And this is a cutting that I took, two cuttings. So I've had these maybe a year now, and they're just starting to get some fenestrated leaves on the newest one. So that's good. Got some rather funky aerial roots sprouting out, making it look a bit ugly. So that lives happily there. A monstera needs lots of light for it, to develop, for it to develop those nice fenestrated leaves with the perforations as well. This is one of my favorite plants. This is a Calafair elder grass. And this is a, probably one of the easiest going Calafairs that you can buy. So I've got three of these in the house. I've got a large one in my living room that I'll show you in a bit. One of my favorite plants. And I've got two baby ones. Don't know where the other one is. It's over there. So this one doesn't have any browning on the leaves, which is good. It looks very handsome in that pot. Nice foliage, very happy with that. And next to it is another type of Calafea that I can't remember the name of, but nice coloring on the leaves, light green and dark green. So this one, I've been experimenting something on this plant. So it did suffer some browning. It's for a video for the channel. So it has been hit with some poor care, uh, but it seems to be bouncing back now. It's a very nice plant in this nice yellow pot that I've got from home base here in the UK. And in the corner, on the back of my windowsill, cutting of my um, uh, Marble Queen Pothos, just some cuttings that I took. One of the leaves is going brown, but new growth is coming through. So that's good. Probably want to get a plank on that for it to develop nice large leaves. This is a blue moonstone. What's the actual name? Chlorophytum? No, that's a spider plant. Can't remember the scientific name. This is a blue moonstone type of succulent. Very thick leaves. That just does its thing. So I bought this last year, I think, 2022. And it had one main stem, so it's developed three new ones since I've bought it, so that seems happy enough. This one is a type of peperomia, which uh, seems to want to leave the pot as much as possible. It's got some yellowing leaves there. Feels a bit dry actually, so it probably needs a watering. But it seems relatively happy. It does push out new growth, and this new growth here has come from the main stem. It's nice and deep green, so happy enough. Oh, damaging my monstera there. And in here is one of my favorite plants. This is an Alocasia fry deck. And uh, I think you can see why, absolutely gorgeous um, leaves. This is on death's door, winter last year, going into spring this year, 2023. It was down to one leaf that was yellow, almost dropping off. And I thought it was a goner, but it bounced back. Started developing new leaves this year, quite late into spring actually. It must have been about maybe May, June. And then they put on a flush of growth, so it seems very happy. New one sprouted there. So there's one main corn. And it looks like there's another five growth points coming out of the soil. So it seems to like that spot that it lives in and I just love the leaves, absolutely gorgeous. So I like to face that towards the light actually. So I'll do that now. 
Just all the leaves face in one direction. I quite like that with an alocasia. I don't like them facing all in different directions. Next to that is a type of jade, a golem jade. I can see, I think you can see why it's called a golem jade. Interesting fingers, looks like it's got. But a really easy going plant, featured on my list of easy going plants recently. Nice thick trunk, it just sits there and does its thing, hardly needs any water. Happy in that spot, gets lots of light. I've got a little terrarium here that I did for the channel. So I did a recent video on succulent care that I'll link to, if I remember, on the, in the top corner. Uh, and this seems to be growing handsomely. Got a golem jade in there and a couple of echeverias. That's quite nice. So check out that video after this. So just moving further along, we have here, this is, what's this called? I've got a little tag here, a stromanth. Calafea, type of calafea I think it is. That's looking very healthy. No brown tips on the leaves so far. I've had this about two months I think now. So got, I bought it for a kind of experiment I'm doing for the channel. The video will be coming out fairly soon. And it seems to be quite an easy going calafea, type of calafea. Stromanth, quite recommend it. This is another cutting of the Ficus elastica tineki. This is the most, this is the type of plant I've got the most of in my house, I think, because I'm always taking cuttings of it. I'm always pruning it back, trying to get it to branch out. And then with the cuttings, I root them and I just have loads and loads of those plants. I probably need to give some of them away, but that's a new leaf that has unfurled since I potted it up into here. And then we have another cutting of my green syngonium, the mother plant over there. So I took some cuttings. That one's rooted out nicely. New growth coming out of the top, so that's very happy. And then here is my philodendron varicosum. So this is a plant that arrived at the same time as my melanocrysis or melanocrysum. Again, it's given me lots of bother with lots of brown leaves. It was responding well recently, but I decided to cut it all back and propagate it. And I might be able to sell a couple of cheeky cuttings because it's quite a sought after plant. <coughs> um, but this one I've got climbing, hopefully, up this plank of wood. So I want the aerial root to grow into the woods. It will strengthen and it will grow bigger and bigger leaves. But lovely, lovely leaves on this plant. Highly recommend it. So again, that's a plant that I have facing away from the room. So you just see its backside, unfortunately. But in the long run, I think that's best for the plant to face the light, makes it happy. This here in front of that is, so firstly, I've got another one of those Calafair Elga grasses. Highly recommend that plant. So that lives happily there. No browning on the leaves again. And then this is a Tradescantia. Um, most people are aware of my kind of love-hate relationship with Tradescantias. This is a tricolor. So this is a nice plant when in rude health, but um, always gets crispy leaves and looks like the green leaves are taking over. There should be much more variegated leaves, white and pink and cream colors, but looks like the green is taking over. So this was a plant that was cascading all the way down here, but I cut it right back to get it to start again because it had loads and loads of crispy leaves and it's pushing out new growth, so it seems happy enough. I've got another jade plant here. I've got a bushy jade plant. It looks like there's three individual plants in this pot. And then next to that, I have a Peperomia obtusifolia, variegated. So this is a really easy going plant. One of the easiest peperomias you can buy, I think. Just sits there and does its thing. Quite forgiving with regards to watering, underwatering and overwatering. And it's got these little weird flowers that always poke out at the top. So it's quite an interesting plant. I do like the variegation on the leaves. And then I've got, hopefully I won't get stabbed, just a, uh, a cactus that was given to me. Doesn't seem, seem to do much, but lives happily in that corner. Gets enough light, I believe. And I've got a echeveria in the corner that I won't be able to get to to show you. 
but that's kind of my windowsill shelves there. And then just on the floor in front of this unit, I've got a peace lily, a type of peace lily. No flowers on this one. Doesn't seem to, I don't seem to get flowers with this one for some reason. Get lots of nice foliage, so still quite nice. It's in a terracotta pot, which is probably not ideal for a peace lily because I do like to have moist soil and terracotta will just uh, seep the water out of the soil. And then here again in terracotta is a cutting, another cutting of my Monstera Deliciosa in my bedroom that I'll show you in a bit. And that new leaf there, hopefully you can see it, has got some perforations. So this is happily growing. And then here on this moss pole is a philodendron lemon and lime. Nice plant, I probably need to tie this up a bit more to get it climbing up, flopping down. Bit of a slow grower, but the new leaves seem to be getting a little bit bigger at the top. It seems like a happy plant, just lives on the floor here. and gets tons of light. So just next to this unit, I've got this shelving unit here, just for plants. My wife absolutely loves me having all these shelving units just for plants, but hey ho. So I've got a couple of begonias here. That's a red flame, and I think this is a Rex, if my memory serves me correctly. So this, these are two very nice, happy begonias. They always get leaves that die back, but uh, just pick those off and no one's any other wiser. There's one there. But very happy plant, you need, they need lots of light and then also need lots of water as well. So I do water them probably every week. Um, just to make sure that soil doesn't dry out. That seems to be the killer for a begonia. Got another Tradescantia here, purple Pelida. Again, love-hate relationship with this plant because the leaves at the base of the stem always die back and you end up with bare stems, but enough of that, I guess. You can see the Hoya Lisa in the corner there and these vines from all these Hoyas that I've got really wrap themselves around this shelving unit, which looks quite interesting. Got another cutting of my Monstera Deliciosa from the bedroom. And this one was a little wet stick. Didn't have any leaves, just the stem piece that I chucked in my perlite propagation box, see if it would develop leaves. And it's de developed into this nice handsome plant. So that was the first leaf that had some fenestration. And that's the latest leaf that still has fenestration. So it'll just continue to get more and more fenestrated as it gets older. This is another Hoya. And this is one that has a stem that's growing all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way around this little unit here and attacking my devil's ivy that I've got up there. So I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or not to have it kind of, it's quite invasive, a Hoya, I find but we'll see if it does any damage to the rest of my plants. Down here is actually one of the easiest going Tradescantias that you can get, the teddy bear vine, Coensis, Sciotis Coensis, I think it's called. Um, really bushy plant, doesn't mind being cut back. Hairy leaves, so it's quite interesting. I do like that one. I've got another Hoya at the back there. So I've got three Hoyas here and they're just absolutely taken over. Maybe I shouldn't have put them all in one place. I've got, this is cuttings of my Puffos Enjoy. So I've got them just in the water jar. You can see the roots. So I've had them in there quite a while. So I change the water every week and give it a good wash, the glass vase, just so algae doesn't take over the, the vase. But the roots seem happy enough. I probably should give it some water fertilizer hydroponic fertilizer, I've not done that. i will push that on quite a bit. And then next to it, if I can get it out without it dropping its leaves, which it tends to do, this is a pickle plant. I can't remember the actual scientific name. And this is very, very sensitive. If you brush past this bad boy, then all the leaves kind of come off the stem and on the floor and then you tread on them. So it's a bit of a nightmare, but when it's healthy, when I first got it, I was absolutely in love with it. The leaves, like little pickles, very nice plants. So I've now got it in this glazed terracotta pot. 
It seems a little bit happier. I think it was drying out too much in an unglazed terracotta pot. So I'll try and put that back carefully there. And then just underneath, I have the mother plant of the Pothos Enjoy. If I can get that out carefully. So I've had this a few years. I've propagated it lots and lots, given away the cuttings. Um, it's a bit beaten up, but lots of new growth coming through. And I do really like this plant, very handsome. Looks nice in this wooden pot. Put that back gently. And then next to it is another Tradescantia, which has some uh, crispy leaves at the base. So this is one that I featured in one of my videos on Tradescantias what to do when it absolutely looks like a mess, basically cut it right back for new foliage to come through, which is what it's done. So I probably next year, early next year, I'll have to cut it right back again for it to develop new stems and leaves. So that's what I will do. I'm just trying to give you a good angle of this Pothos Devil's Ivy that I've got in this pot here. And it's got a stem that's trailing all along there and it's ended here so far. So I'm hopefully gonna get it to go all along the window there. And I've got it growing another stem piece along the picture rail up there as well. And there's a piece of Hoya that has come all the way from down here to the end of the stem over there. So it's taken over quite a lot. But very nice plant, again, it's in a terracotta pot unglazed, so I do need to water that quite often, maybe twice a week. And I bottom water it, so it doesn't get that much water when I do water it, so I need to do it twice a week. And it seems happy enough, lots of new growth coming through. And just up here, next to this speaker, got this cute little planter. This is from Planter Homer, I think. They sent me this as a little tester. So it's like a little Chinese doll or something, or a doll that you can put some plant in, so it acts like hair for it. So it's quite cute. So that's a Tradescantia teddy bear vine that I've got in there. Some cuttings, I did that from my Patreon channel recently. And then this is my Croton, which is one of the more difficult plants to look after, but this one seems to be okay. This one actually featured in my video where I was watering my plants every day for 30 days, and this was one of them. And it doesn't seem to have battered an eyelid. So it lives quite happily there. I did have a croton before, which died. I think it got spider mites and I realized too late and basically lost the plant. But this one doesn't have any bugs as far as I can see. It's still got some new leaves coming out. It's probably not in a bright enough spot up here, but I've not really got anywhere else to put it. So my fireplace mantle, in my dining room, got a selection of plants just in front of this picture. I often get comments on this picture on my videos. This is by local artist, Pete McKee. I think it's called Sea Breeze. Very nice picture, quite interesting. But on the windowsill, this is a Syngonium Red Arrow, which this is actually a cutting from the mother plant that I lost. It was in the same spot that I had my I have my lipstick plant up there, which died. I think it was getting too much light. So I put this one way back, away from the light. It must be a good two meters away. Slow growing, but the leaves aren't dying. They aren't going brown. So hopefully it will grow, you know, get it to climb up this trellis, wall trellis that I've got up here. Pink syngonium, losing its leaf there. Uh, this one is quite happy. Probably not getting as much light as it wants. It's in a terracotta pot, so it is drying out quite a lot. So I do need to water it. I need to rotate it because the leaves are very sensitive to the light. They always want to face the light. This one is a plant I've got a long history with. A checkered history, shall I say. This is a Chlorophytum orchidestrum or something. Green orange plant. I got it last year, early last year, as part of an unboxing video, and all the leaves went brown, black even, and they died off. So it's taken me a lot of trial and error to understand what was wrong with this plant. One of, one of which was light, it was getting too much light, and it burned the leaves. So I put it here, away from the window, to see if that would 
correct it, which it did a little bit, but they still kept coming through the black leaves. So then I realized it was probably the chlorine in my water. So I've been using water conditioner and that has really cleared up the leaves of this plant. So I do recommend dechlorinating your water if you can. I've got a link to that in my Amazon store, I believe. And then here is my sorry looking uh, Monstera adansonii. So I cut this right back on a recent video about the adansonii on the channel, because it was all quite straggly looking on this trellis trellis. So I've cut it right back and it's growing new stem pieces at the bottom. I can see three, four, five, six. Six new stems coming out of the bottom. I only did it two, three weeks ago, four weeks ago maybe. So that will grow happily onto there. And I've got another Pophos Devil's Ivy growing onto this trellis trellis again, wall trellis. And I've got a Calafea Macayana, I think it's called. Just a baby plant. This was getting really crispy brown leaves, but when I switched to dechlorination, dechlorinating my water, still gets a few brown leaves, but it's much less than what it was, so that's much happier. And that lives on the end there. Probably not in a bright enough spot, but seems to be fine. So we're now down onto the half of my fireplace. I've got a selection of plants just dotted here because I've got nowhere else to put them really. Got a variegated spider, not spider plant, snake plant, which is happy enough. Got one dodgy leaf at the back there. Just get rid of that. Got one dying leaf there. Um, not sure why that was, but never mind. Uh, I've got my plant Nemesis here, which is my Calafea Zebrina. So this guy I've long struggled with. I've had it for years and years, this plant. It always, always goes crispy brown at the end of summer, beginning of autumn and winter. All the leaves go crispy brown, but since, like I say, I've switched to dechlorinating my water, much, much, much happier. It's a gorgeous plant as well, really love it. So I'm happy that I've been able to grow this relatively successfully now. Next to that, I've got two Diefenbachias, which I've struggled with, but all of that used to have leaves dying back quite regularly, going mushy and brown. But since I've moved it away from the light and I've been using dechlorinated water, it's much, much happier. New growth, so that's that one, and a slightly different one, slightly different variegation in the leaves. So this is well away from my window, probably two meters from my east facing window. And then I've got the Chinese money plant, which is doing okay. So I've got a recent video on how to care for these correctly and why the leaves always fall off and what you can do about it. So check out that video on the channel. I've got a peace lily right at the back which I've not checked on in a while. And they've got a nasty yellow leaf there. Looks like it's the oldest leaf, so I can probably just pull that off. Got a spent flower there. Got another spent flower there. So it has flowered this year, despite being in a relatively low light position. But I do have these Sansi grow lights shining over this spot. So it kind of turns this low light spot into a medium light spot, which is good enough for these plants. Other than that though, new growth on the foliage, so it does seem happy, but I will tidy that up after this video. It's quite crowded in this spot, which is probably not ideal for pests and stuff, but I've got so many plants, I don't know what to do with them really. And I've got the money tree. So did a recent video on giving milk to plants. And I bought two money trees, one of which is no longer with us, and this one is still with us. It's a very nice plant. Happily growing, not giving it any milk, which is ideal. And I've got a Dracaena at the back, which I'm not a massive fan of, but it's quite a big plant. So it does uh, fill in that space quite nicely. It does have some brown leaves. Um, some browning on the edges as well, I'm not sure why. Um, 
Maybe they're just the oldest leaves. Okay, so just away from the fireplace, I've got this little trolley, Ikea trolley, blue one. So I keep some bits and pieces for the channel, like my, my microphone case and all stands and bits and bobs like that. But I've also set up these grow lights. These are just cheap grow lights that I've got from Amazon, which do a job. But I've got, I normally use this for like my propagation area or any plants that need rehabbing, then having grow lights over those types of plants does a good job of rehabbing the plants. So this is cuttings from the Philodendron melanocrysum, um, which are rooting very happily. One in particular is doing very well. I'll show you that. There we are. So there's lots of lovely roots. And there's a new stem piece already showing there. So that'll develop into a nice plant. That one's probably the most advanced of the four cuttings that I've got in here, but they're all coming along quite nicely. So if you've got propagations, I do recommend just sticking a grow light over them because it really does benefit them very well. This is a type of alocasia. This is another one that really, really struggled. I can't remember what the name of this one is. I got it in that plant unboxing video and all the leaves died off. And it, managed to grow this new one this year. So it went into dormancy basically over the winter. This one developed quite early on, maybe three months ago, and that was it. Now finally, a new one is sprouting now. So I've moved it to this spot under this grow light to get it growing a bit more. And then we have some leaf cuttings of jade. So if you didn't know that, you can just propagate the leaves of a jade plant, just lay them on some soil. They'll push new roots into the soil and then new stems will pop up. It's quite an efficient way to grow lots and lots of jade plants. And here we have the last plant in the kitchen dining area. Just a classic snake plant, which uh, is quite boring really, but fills in this space nicely. And then Mr. Sheffield has taken some cuttings of some hydrangea flowers from the garden, which is quite nice. Put it in that little vase and they'll dry out and a, a nice little decorative piece for the house. So that's the dining room and kitchen, but there's more, lots more in the uh, living room. So we're now into my living room. So I've got this black Ikea cabinet on here, and this is about three meters, two, three meters away from the nearest window, west facing window there. So it's quite a dark spot here. So I do have a couple of grow lights. Again, cheap Amazon grow lights there shining down on these plants. And I've got a sansi bulb in this light fixture here that's shining over my large Calafea algal grass that I'll show you in detail in a bit. So again, like in the di dining room, I like to keep some plants that I'm propagating or that I'm rehabbing to health under grow light. So that's what I've got here. So this one doesn't normally belong here, but I think Mr. Sheffield has put it here to move something out of the way. So this is a a Monstera deliciosa, a little baby plant. This featured in a recent video on this plant. Very, not variegation, fenestrated leaf there. So this will continue to grow up this plank of wood, hopefully. So I'll pop that over here. A couple of cuttings, etc. This is cuttings of my Tradescantia tricolor. So the plant that I cut back in the other room, I made some cuttings with and it's grown out handsomely into this plant. I did that for my Patreon channel. Really nice variegation. You can see when it's properly variegated how lovely this plant is, but it does tend to die back quite often. So I always cut back and replant it. Uh, I've got a spider plant here, which is looking quite good. It has been beaten up because it was part of my experiment video that I've got coming out on the channel soon. So it was looking a bit ropey, but since I put it under that grow light, much healthier. And then some cuttings. Got some pothos, uh, satin pothos cuttings. So I've recently just taken these, so they're not rooted yet. So I've just got them suspended on this little mason jar with water. I used to propagate in a pearl-like prop box 
That was a very good way to do it, probably my favourite way, but it did take up a lot of space. So I've now switched to doing water propagations, which takes a bit longer in my experience, but eventually it does get there. And then this is cuttings of my Philodendron varicosum that I mentioned in my dining room. So there are some roots developing on these. There's a few new stems as well. Let's see if I can pull one out or three. So there's that cutting there, new roots and a new stem piece just growing on there. So these are all happily rooting. So it's a really nice plant. So I'll be able to um, pot these on, keep a couple of them and then sell maybe two or three of them. Uh, and I've got some more wet sticks. I think it's called wet sticks, where you just have the the um, the stem piece without a leaf. I just popped it in water to see if it would develop roots, and it has. And it's got a new stem growing there, so that's very happy there. I'll put that carefully back. Uh, more propagation. This is of my Teneki ruby, Ficus elastica Teneki ruby. So that one is a bit strange because it's not got any roots, but it's got a new stem growing. But it's not really normal for a stem to grow before the roots. Normally what you'd expect is something like that for new roots to develop and then a new stem piece to come after. So I'm not sure what's happened there. And that one's not really got any roots at all. So for some reason, they're taking a long time to develop roots if that was in perlite, a perlite prop box, then I reckon they, that would be already ready to be planted up, but not so. So these are some cuttings of my uh, Philodendra um, Brazil. That I'll show you in a bit, it's just living over there. Some cuttings that I took. So these rooted out beginning of the year, maybe even the end, end of last year, and I potted them up into there and they're developing new leaves. So I've got two back there. Got some rooted cuttings of another satin puffos. See if I can get one out without bringing out the whole lot. So they're rooted nicely. They're probably ready to be potted up, but there's no great rush really. They do happily live in water as long as you change the water every now and then. They do happily live there for a fairly long time. And then I've got a aloe vera a type of aloe which uh, I do often struggle with this type of plant. I did have another a kind of regular aloe vera. This one's got spiky leaves. I'm not sure what the difference is, but this one's happy more or less under these grow lights. The other one I lost because I kept, kept going gray and mushy on me for some reason. And then here we have a type of succulent, which is looking a bit ropey. This was given to me by an ex colleague at work. I've kind of forgotten about it, to be honest. I can't remember what that's called. I'll have to look it up. Looking a bit leggy and the leaves are falling off, it seems. So I'll put that one back and probably cut it back for it to branch out and develop a, more of a bushy appearance. On the fireplace mantle in my living room, so just next to that IKEA cabinet over there, I've got one of the easiest plants that I have, a Aglonema tigress. This gives me absolutely no bother whatsoever. Quite a slow grower because it's not getting tons of light in this spot, about two meters away from that window, but happy enough living there. It's getting blocked out by this Philodendron Brazil, but it doesn't seem to mind too much. One crispy leaf there on the end, but that's about it. So this is the mother plant of the Philodendron Brazil that I had some cuttings of over there. Again, got it growing up this trellis trellis. Um, happy plant, not very fussy at all, quite easy to look after. Sometimes the oldest leaf might go a little bit yellow or brown or pale, ready to come off, like that one there. But that's just what plants do. Put that over there. So that looks quite nice in front of this mirror. Just makes it look... Uh, Bit, a bit more bushy, I guess, with a mirror behind it. Got a rather sad looking, whoops, don't wanna chuck that on the floor. Sad looking snake plant. So I think this was the division that I took a while ago. So these are the old leaves from the division and this is the new leaf. 
and it's really elongated thin stem which means it's searching for the light so it's not getting anywhere near enough light in this spot but I'm not really bothered about the plant so I don't really I'm not really fussed about keeping it anywhere else in the house just in front of the black IKEA cabinet I've got my pride and joy my large Calafaya Elgograss, so much bigger than the one I've got in the dining room. It's a very happy plant, so it's got this sancy bulb growing over it, which makes it much happier. So this will be a very dark spot for it, but with that grow light, it makes it a medium light spot, which is good enough. Uh, and all the leaves are more or less happy. There is some browning on some of the tips, but you know, it's a Calafaya. And switching to dechlorinated water has really helped. So we're just in front of my living room window now. And this bad boy here is a plant I'm really proud of. It's a little um, pothos, mixed pothos planter that I made for the channel. There's a video on how I made this. So there's three plants in here, pothos devil's ivy, variegated, a neon pothos, which is this one here, and a satin pothos. And I think the three of these plants together looks absolutely gorgeous in this nice big uh, orange planter. So it looks handsome in front of this TV here. The only problem with this plant is that I often have it that way and my son likes to kind of sit here and watch TV and he has a tendency to play with these leaves and uh, kind of make holes in them, which is why I've got so many cuttings of the satin pothos. As the little terror has a uh, made a nuisance of himself. Just behind that in this corner here is my uh, Alocasia Amazonica, which is a bit of a fussy plant to be honest because often goes quite dormant, which is that leaf there. That's the oldest leaf actually, but often gets browning, yellowing leaves that I have to cut off. It does that towards the end of the year. So it goes into dormancy over winter normally. Doesn't look like it's gonna do that this year because these leaves look much healthier. These are all new leaves this year, apart from that one. So no signing of any, no sign of any yellowing or browning yet. So quite, I think it's happier for some reason in this spot. Maybe it's a bit more established, a bit more mature. Above the Amazonica, I've got another spider plant, which is a bit of a nemesis really, because it's got lots of crispy leaves, crispy brown leaves, but it's got pushing out pups, which makes it look quite interesting, I guess. So I'll keep it in this spot. Gets lots of light, probably too much sun in this spot with the, uh, the sun coming in in the afternoon, late afternoon and kind of burning these leaves, it looks like, but hopefully it'll adapt at some point. It's pushing out lots of babies, so it seems relatively happy, I guess. So hidden from view behind this blue couch in front of my window, I've got a selection of plants right behind me. Got yet another cutting of my Ficus elastica tineki. So I've got absolutely tons of these. And that new leaf is nice and big there, as you can see. Very handsome plant. Probably needs to be up potted into a bigger pot. And then I've got a selection of peperomias here. This is a peperomia angulata. So this used to live in a terracotta pot. Did I just lose a leaf there? Lost a flower spike, I tied it up. So this used to live in terracotta, so it was much too dry for it, I think. So I recently repotted it, part of a Patreon video, I believe, into some cyber soil soil. It's much happier. Got some new leaves coming through there. So that'll grow nice and bushy. Quite a quick grow once it gets going. Got another of my obtrusifolia, variegated. Again, very happy. And this is in a glazed terracotta pot. By the way, I've got the glaze that I use uh, to glaze my pots on my Amazon store, linked in the description. And then next to that, a Peperomia Santorini, which is a super fast grower. I actually had some cuttings of this in my terrarium that I did last year. Um, so I had some, in the terrarium, open terrarium, I had some Santorini, Peperomia Santorini cuttings with some Fitonia, and this much outgrew the Fitonia much quicker Again, that was living in terracotta. The three of these were living in terracotta, unglazed, too dry for it. So I've recently potted it up into plastic. It needs a decorative pot. But 
already looking much happier. I've only done, the, only done that in the last couple of weeks. Another spider plant. How's this looking? Not really checked on this. So these plants are a bit hidden behind the sofa, so I tend to forget about them a little bit. But this one doesn't look too bad. Crispy leaves on the ends, it looks like. Not too bad though. It does get some protection from the sun from this uh, this little shelving unit that again my local joiner made for me. I've got a nut cutting of a teddy bear vine here that looks like it's getting attacked by a Hoya. So that lives in a tiny pot, I think, in here. Yep. Tiny pot in a big decorative pot. It's getting very hairy. So fast growers are Tradescantia, especially this one. This entire plant, this is cutting from the one in the, in the dining room. These entire plants came from just a tiny cutting that I got found on the floor of my local nursery. And uh, it's just developed into these absolute monster plants. But next to that is a cutting of my Hoya, which wants to go all over the place, I think, yes. That is one long stem. So this is a Hoya Lisa. So that will take over something in this space. So on top of the shelving unit that was built for us, got yet another Ficus Elastica Tineki cutting, which I cut the main stem there. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like some sap that dried on top and it developed two new branches just as I wanted. So sometimes it develops like two new branches just as you want, and sometimes it doesn't, like the one in the dining room. So that looks happy enough. This is a Peperomia polybotria, which is a very nice plant in my estimation. Looking a bit dry. Once the flowers start to droop over like they are with this one, I think it's a bit dry. Feel how heavy it is. Yep, the pot feels very light. I need to drink. I'll do that after this. It's in probably too bright a spot because some of the leaves are fading. I did lose some leaves to this plant over the last few weeks, but hopefully it will adapt, especially over the winter. And I think so. This is very similar to the Chinese money plant, but I think it's a nicer plant because of the. Uh, Glossy leaves, the glossy foliage, much easier to look after as well. Put that back. Echeveria there, just a classic blue Echeveria. Echeveria cutting I took from somewhere, I can't remember where. Quite leggy, these cutting back it looks like, flopping over all over the place. Over here is my fiddle leaf fig. So this is getting a little bit lanky. I did defoliate the bottom to get it to kind of be more of a tree-like structure. So the next stage, I think, is to cut it back, propagate the top, and hopefully it will branch out, look more like a tree-like structure. Looks quite nice, but looking a bit lanky. This is the Ficus benjamina, which is a very nice plant. It's probably one of the more easy-going ficus plants that you can buy. As long as you give it lots of light and give it enough water, this one feels quite light, actually. So get it out. Yeah, a little bit light. Probably needs a bit of a drink. I'll get my moisture meter in there just to confirm. Some more cuttings of my echeverias. This one's quite interesting. I had I cut back the echeveria that was leggy here, the main central stem, and it's branched out into two new plants, which are a bit wobbly, hanging on by a thread and then another puff, puffos devil's ivy which is getting too much light this west facing spot is too much for it because it's losing some leaves quite a few leaves by the looks of things should have tidied this up a while ago but not too bothered because there is new growth coming out of the top that one's nice and shiny so it's probably just adapting to this spot so we'll see how it goes over this over the winter and if it bounces back during the spring and just hidden behind this curtain and my couch, I've got three plants here. This cutting from my Monstera adansonii, 
That was from the mother plant over there. I took a few cuttings. The, mo the mother lives there. Child lives in this room. I've got another one in the, in the bedroom, which is very nice, which I'll show you in a bit. That's one of my pride and joys. So I'm quite excited to show you that one. Featured in my channel recently. This is a Ficus Elastica Tineki Ruby this time. So I've got the cuttings over there on that Ikea cabinet, the black one, that are rooting or are slow to root. Hopefully this isn't dripping too much, but for some reason, this one, so I cut it back in the middle there, it developed two branches. Now it's looking a bit ropey, like it's on its way out. So not sure what's wrong with that one. And then I've got a Peperomia raindrop. No, Peperomia hope, I think this is called. So this is one that I've cut right back recently because it was going all over the place and it had tiny little leaves. So I cut it right back. Uh, so hopefully that will grow new stems. And just behind me over here, I've got this rather odd looking plant. If I can grab it. Ooh, Philodendron new red, which as you can see, is uh, searching for the light in quite a big way. So it lives here on this, on this little table here, which uh, this wall here obviously blocks the light. So all the leaves are kind of coming this way in search of the light, which is quite funny. So I kind of left it to do that. And I think it looks quite quirky, quite like it. So up in my bedroom, I've got a few plants up here. And these are two of my favorite plants really. Got my large Monstera deliciosa, which is uh, looking very healthy, very large. So I got this from Ikea, maybe mm, six years ago, something like that, six, seven years ago. It was only a small plant. And it's been repotted lots of times over the years and it's just grown and grown and grown. So I've got it growing up these three bamboo stakes as a kind of a DIY trellis system. And all the leaves, are nice and large. It's tending to want to face towards the light over there. So it's a west facing window over there. And uh, I've also got a terracotta stake in the soil with a, a water, with a, a bottle of pins filled with water turned upside down in it. So it's, it gets um, drip irrigation basically through the terracotta stake in the soil. And it's absolutely loving life. And then next to it, is its younger brother, the Monstera adansonii, which I've got growing up this tray leaf trellis and it's uh, fully attached. I've got a recent video on this plant, Monstera adansonii. It's growing up this tray leaf trellis. All the area roots have attached to the wood, which means it feels nice and secure and it should start to put out larger and larger leaves. That newest one there is quite large compared to the smaller ones at the bottom. And uh, I just leave it to sit there and face in this direction. I don't rotate it and uh, it just happily lives there. So always a good idea if you're growing something up something just to leave it facing towards the light, unless it's on a windowsill or something, then it might be tricky and you'd be seeing the back side of it. But as you can see, all the leaves facing in one direction, it just looks like a nice plant. So this right here, the windowsill of my bedroom is the brightest and warmest spot in my house. So this is directly above my living room, which is also has the same orientation, but there is quite a large hedge just in front of our window, which gives us privacy from our neighbors, but also means that there's less light coming into that room, just a little bit anyway. But whereas this one doesn't have any obstructions, it just gets a nice big view of the sky, all of these plants. So this is where I keep the majority or a lot of my succulent type plants and cacti. So I've got another cactus there, same one as the one I've got in my dining room and it's producing little pups there because it's got lots and lots of light up here. So it's very happy in that spot. Got a type of Echeveria. I think I got this from B&Q, a big box store, a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago. It's a really nice plant. I try not to touch the leaves as much as possible because that leaves a mark and it tends to send them on a downward spiral. And then this is a type of jade plant, kind of a wavy jade. I do like the leaves on this. Got quite a thick trunk. 
looks like one plant in here with two trunks and it's got some babies growing at the bottom which is quite interesting feels quite light so it probably does want to drink but otherwise very healthy starting to develop some purple edging which is always a good sign for a J plant I've got this Echeveria so this is the mother plant of all the cuttings that I showed you downstairs um, so this was bought from Ikea I believe and I always have to cut it back because it always grows really leggy and that just means I get loads and loads of cuttings so the last one I did of that I did for the Patreon channel this is a type of sedum so this is a crawling or a sprawling I think kind of succulent plant which I didn't understand for a very long time I thought I always wanted to grow upwards so I kind of forced it to grow on some sticks, but I didn't really like that. So I let it, I let it just sprawl now and it's much happier. New growth points along the way. So very happy plants. This is a cutting of my jade. Can't remember which one, but one of the jades downstairs. Maybe it was the big one in the, in the dining room on the, on the shelf, windowsill. So this one has got lots and lots of purple edging. So it gets tons of sunlight here. Well, I say tons of sunlight, we are in Sheffield. But very happy plant, probably a little bit too small. It's quite a thick trunk. Too small a pot, maybe wants up potting. And that is just in a decorative pot as well. That's not in a, a nursery pot with drainage holes, which goes against what I always advise. Got another cactus, which always stabs me when I'm looking after these plants. Doesn't really do much, but Feels really, really heavy. Nice plant nonetheless. And then back here is another type of Echeveria. This is a much hairier type. Really interesting foliage on this bad boy. But much happier in this spot than where I used to keep it. So it did grow quite leggy before. So I recently cut it back on my Patreon page. It was part of a free plant planter. I think I had a sedum in here as well as another Echeveria. And all looking a bit ropey. So I reset it, put it on its own. It's much happier here. And that brings us to the end of my houseplant tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other houseplant tour, my last one, to kind of see the difference between what I've got now and what I've got before. And I'll see you again in the next video.